Hi, I'd like to do a quick video on squish band cutting. So I know a lot of people are hesitant to do this because they're afraid or they just they just don't know how to do it or they think that the setup's gonna take too long. Um, once you get your setup down, you can get to where you can cut one of these in under a half an hour pretty easily. Um, sometimes I get them done in like 10, 15 minutes. But here's my plate. Um, you know, we're just gonna put it backwards, mount the cylinder up backwards in the forward draw. Um, obviously it's turned into Swiss cheese over the years, but I'm thinking a person could probably just create like a, a standard pattern, you know, just alternately spaced holes and you'd be able to get, uh, just about every cylinder on there. You'd be able to find it because you can, if you tap these things out pretty loose, you can kind of bend the studs around to get through. And I just have quarter 20 studs that are, uh, laid down and then, um, threaded to five millimeter. Uh, another thing I do too is I always put a pivot point at the center here and that way it holds the top of the cylinder, it indents a little bit and it holds it from moving around as well as creates a predictable pivot point for when you're trying to get the run out. Um, you don't end up getting some weird uh, lift, you know, rocking from, from getting up on the edges of the of the cylinder of, or some boss. Um, I've seen people just like throw a dime underneath there too to create an, a pivot point, but this is what works out well for me. And you notice I have it offset because it's, sometimes it's nice to be able to just turn it and index it to find a nice spot where it's gonna hit on the cylinder. So let me get this thing set up and we'll go about how to true this up. Okay, so I got this bolted in there. All the, all the nuts are snugged up. As you can see, it's got a ton of run out. So some of the things that I use to make this process go faster is I have a long stylus test indicator. I've seen people use like coaxial indicators and stuff off of the, off the tailstock. I find it easier that I can Put it here and use this to tram up and down the cylinder and something else i have too is a stop on the carriage and this i set up to keep me from crashing the stylus into the squish band when i'm doing this so i'll just run this up to where the stylus is pretty much close to that ring of death or as far as i really want to move it up which is about right there. This thing's got a terrible amount of run out right now, so we'll have to fix that. So we'll just start pushing this thing closer. That's close enough we can actually start. Oop, I bumped the camera there. So just run this thing around and try to get it somewhat close because right now the cylinder is not square to the, to the lathe either, but when we go to do that process, we'll screw up this center but we just want to get this thing semi-close so we aren't having to move it a ton later. Keep us from chasing our butt. That's close enough. Now what we're going to do is I like to run up and down the cylinder wall right next to the exhaust port. And you can see how that tells us what we need to do here. And I find this to be a lot faster than trying to circle that 
get the circle up down here and get the circle up here. Just a tiny bit more. That's good on that side. Let's switch to this side. Remember, whatever you're doing on this, you're probably going to have to go one and a half times to get the, whatever your run out is, you're going to have to go one and a half, so half past it to get it to be where you want to be. We'll go back and check this side. So that's got, that's good there. We'll go back, check this. Just a tiny bit. We need to go this way. Oh, we need to go the other way. There we go. Now nah, we'll do this. Here you're just going to go half the distance. So we got about four thousandths now. And this we're just going to crack it just a tiny bit. Looks good there. Let's run up the exhaust port once again and see how bad we are. So here is an interesting case too where it has a divot underneath the intake port so you can actually circle the whole way around. But that's well within tolerance. We got about a thousandths run out up here but it's also happening um, identically on both sides. So it's actually just uh, honed out a little bigger from transfer underneath the transfer ports. So now we got this all trued up. We can switch over to our boring bar, which I like to use this three quarter inch carbide boring bar with a high rake. I think it's like a CCGT insert. And I run it at the most angle that I can so that this part's almost flat and that way it doesn't drag on the plating very much. And then we have a dial indicator down over here. And we put one back here. And I like to use the compound set it about two degrees because I like to cut the squish bands at a little bit of an angle and so we'll unlock this make sure we got enough we're sat in a place where it's got enough movement and I bumped the camera again so then we'll move this guy to zero so in case we bump it we know where to get back to it Just gonna go up and touch off. So we'll just run up the cylinder wall first. Pretty close to the cylinder wall and we'll just gently go until we hit the squish band. Boom, like that. We'll set up this guy, zero it, back off about 15, 20 thou. So 
grab this, and then start spinning it over by hand until we get a touch off. zero now we'll run up about 20 thousandths again and spin over and touch off this this side it's right there and we'll change camera angle so I'm not hitting the camera when I'm doing this. So now we've got it all touched off. I put this thing in gear. I spent it about 500 RPM. We're gonna find a safe location here, which on this is about 300,000. So you can just take a flashlight and look up in the cylinder to make sure that you're gonna be missing it when you first start your cuts. But we'll turn it on. I like to take about 10,000 at a time. So I'll move it ten thousandths, and then I'll just slowly move this by hand. This is a 550 cylinder, 550 Husqvarna XP. So they have a little bit of overplating on the squish band. It makes it a little tough to get through right at the start of the cut. Here it where I have to you have to kind of put a little bit of little bit of pressure to it and it'll cut through. But those inserts that I use really really peel that transfer out really well. turn the air on so I can pull this thing out so we can get you guys a little view. So something else I like to do too is to take like a pick or something and just run it up and down the bore just to make sure I didn't leave a step anywhere that will catch a ring which I did not so it's good to go <laughs> <laughs> 